Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sau and welcome to Vet Surgery Teach. So today I welcome you to the last class of anesthesiology session and also the last class of the inhalant anesthetic session. Okay, uh, after this there will be a very small portion that is the local anesthetics. I have covered the local anesthetics in the playlist anesthetic protocol. There we will be find different nerve blocks that has been followed. Usually it is followed in large animals. Okay, so you can check that in that section. Apart from that all the anesthesiology will be finished after this class. Today we will be discussing the gaseous anesthetics, mostly the nitrogen oxide. We have studied the volatile anesthetics in the previous class. Okay, let us go to the class. Before that some formalities, you know that. Please do subscribe to this channel and also uh, press the bell icon so that you can get the notification every time I upload the videos. Next, first the introduction to the gaseous anesthetics, especially the nitrogen oxide which is commonly used. Nitrogen oxide is not a potent anesthetic. Okay, so it is not a, uh, used for induction or the maintenance of the nitrogen, uh, the anesthesia. Usually, it is used as anesthetic adjunct. I will adjuvant. You will know what is this. And also remember one thing: at sea level, maximum 75% of inspired breath can be nitrogen oxide. Okay, it is a gaseous anesthetic, so it will be supplied along with the fresh gas flow. Fresh gas flow. I already told you the fresh gas flow can be purely oxygen or it can be combination of oxygen and nitrogen oxide. These are the most common gases which has been used. Okay, Here you can say the nitrogen oxide the maximum concentration should be 75%. Okay, In air the concentration is 78% Okay, and 21% is the oxygen. So, maximum you can give is 75 percent if you are going to the higher altitude then this concentration will fall down. Okay. So, this is the maximum. Remember the max value for the nitrogen oxide minimum alveolar concentration is 200 percent. Now, you can say why it is not a potent anesthetic. You cannot supply 200 percent of nitrogen oxide. There will not be any oxygen and the animal will go into the hypoxia. Okay. So, what is anesthetic adjuvant? <coughs> It means the anesthetic adjuvant means suppose you are using oxygen as fresh gas flow. If you are using only oxygen as fresh gas flow, then you need isofluorine. I am taking example of isofluorine, which is used for maintenance of anesthesia. Anesthesia. You need the max value of isofluorine is 1.28 percent in case of dog. Okay, 1.28 percent. If you are using along with nitrogen oxide, this is for example not exact value, you may not need 1.2 percent of isofluorine to maintain, you may need 1 percent. Okay. So, it reduces the concentration of other inhalant anesthetic or you can say other potent inhalant anesthetics. You see isofluorine is more potent than the nitrogen oxide. If any agent is more potent, it also has more side effects or you can say the side effect is more potent also. So, if any method is there, you have you can reduce this isoprene concentration, then this, this should be better for patient and this is uh, you can say practically applicable also. You see the addition of pre-anesthetic, the concept of pre-anesthetic is to reduce the concentration of actual anesthetic. Okay, you are adding xylazine to ketamine so that the ketamine concentration itself can be reduced. Ketamine is a potent general anesthetic. So, when you are using potent and general anesthetic, ketamine has side effect of you can say convulsions. If you are adding xylazine, it will reduce the convulsions as well as the concentration of a ketamine will be reduced. If you are, for example, in cat, if you are using only ketamine, then the concentration is 10 to 30 mg per kg body weight. Okay, 10 to 30 mg per, uh, per kg. If you are adding diazepam or xylazine, these are common pre anesthetic which are used to the ketamine protocol. If you are using diazepam or xylazine, this concentration may reduce up to 5 mg per kg body weight. Okay, so at this low concentration, or you can say, though it is anesthetic concentration, but the uh, requirement is less. So the side effect of this ketamine will be minimized. 
okay that is known as anesthetic adjuvant so nitrogen oxide is basically used as the anesthetic adjuvant rather than the general anesthetics okay next coming to the thermodynamics okay this is the effect on the cns central nervous system it has minimum uh, sorry cardiovascular system i am very sorry this is cardiovascular system cds minimum depression of the cardiovascular system in real sense it reduces the myocardial function but it also stimulate the sympathetic nerves okay the sympathetic stimulation you can say counter balances the this negative or the uh, reduction in the myocardial function so in total it balances so you will find minimum depression of the cardiovascular system but due to this stimulation of this sympathetic system you will find arrhythmia you may find arrhythmia okay it will prone the patient towards the arrhythmia okay this is the effect on the cardiovascular system next you can say the respiratory system these two systems are very very important respiratory system you will find minimal depression of the respiratory system also though it may decrease the inspired oxygen con uh, consumption you see if you are using only oxygen it is 100% of oxygen when you are adding the nitrogen oxide some portion of oxygen you have to compromise or you can say you have to spare some oxygen concentration for the nitrogen oxide so it may reduce the inspired oxygen concentration okay remember the maximum is 75% that you can supply okay not beyond that also it has minimal effect on liver and kidney unlike the isoflurane sevoflurane the inhaled anesthetic they have some negative effect on the liver they can produce liver injuries in the kidney especially you may remember remembering the methoxyflurane and the sevoflurane sevoflurane produces compound a which may injure the kidney unlike them the, uh, the nitrogen oxide does not have any much effect or you can say minimal effect on the liver and kidney this is a phenomena which has been found in books but i didn't find good articles regarding that it is mostly from the human research if you are using nitrogen oxide for the prolonged period surgery you may find megaloblastic hematopoiesis and polyneuropathy okay so just remember this one i didn't find much reference to veterinary anesthesiology but this is found in human anesthesiology okay now there are two phenomena associated with nitrogen oxide and you may find these as short notes or you can say some externals may ask the questions first one is the in uh, transfer of nitrogen oxide to closed gas spaces what is this phenomena in body we will find different closed spaces like stomach there we will find some air some spaces which is occupied air in stomach and intestine apart from air we may find some other gases also hydrogen sulfide methane like that you may find other gases also but most of the constituents are air stomach intestine air sinuses okay sinus and middle ear you will find some cavities which is occupied by air okay in air the major constituent is nitrogen which is 78 percent apart from them some pathological conditions in which you will find air in the body that is pneumoperitoneum or pneumothorax these are the conditions in which you will find the air inside trapped inside cavity okay air cavity so what happens in normal air cavity you will find more predominantly the nitrogen okay so what this nitrogen does it usually transfers into the blood and it clears out the blood clears out this nitrogen when the patient is anesthetized or patient is supplied with the nitrogen oxide this nitrogen it goes just like the clearance okay it will diffuse into the blood and will clear out but here there isn't any nitrogen oxide there is no nitrogen oxide in this cavity what will happen in the blood nitrogen concentration is high or you can see the partial pressure of nitrogen oxide is high so this nitrogen oxide will diffuse into this cavity okay this cavity and remember one thing the clearance of this nitrogen if i am assuming this is one then the entry of nitrogen oxide into the sinus or you can say cavity is 30 times more what will happen the amount of air which is cleared is less than the amount of nitrogen oxide gas entering into this cavity eventually what will happen this is not equilibrium okay one thing is going much faster rate right? and one thing is clearing in a very slow rate what will happen this will put pressure on these cavities 
this air the nitrogen oxide which is entering this cavity so the cavity may enlarge okay if it is a bony cavity like sinuses or you can say the middle ear it will put pressure and it may cause some pain you will mind find some sinus pain or you can say the pain in the middle ear due to this phenomena okay now we understood what is the transfer of nitrogen oxide to closed gas spaces imagine this is a normal thing if it the animal has some pneumoperitoneum or pneumothorax imagine the same the phenomena is the same it may worsen the condition so it should be used accordingly okay next is diffusion hypoxia diffusion hypoxia this is a very common question many a times the external switch may come for viva or practical examination they may ask this question what is diffusion hypoxia in case of nitrogen the phenomena is same as the second gas effect or uh, uh, transfer uh, uh, transfer into the closed gas species what will happen in normal cases when you are anesthetized with nitrogen oxide there is equilibrium between the alveolar nitrogen oxide and the blood nitrogen oxide and another thing which is important for respiration is oxygen they have the equilibrium number of oxygen entering the blood is equal to number of the blood, uh, oxygen coming from the blood to the alveolus they are in equilibrium what will happen if you are removing the nitrogen oxide during the recovery and you are allowing the patient to breathe air breathe the ambient air okay in air oxygen is only 21 percent okay very less oxygen so when you have withdrawn this red color you see withdrawn the nitrogen oxide what will happen similarly to the closed gas effect a closed gas chamber effect see the nitrogen concentration in blood is now high and the nitrogen oxide concentration here is low nitrogen oxide will diffuse from the blood to the alveolar and will get accumulated when the nitrogen oxide will get accumulated inside the alveolus this will dilute this oxygen suppose this is 21 percent ambient air contains 21 percent when the nitrogen will diffuse it will reduce this 21 percentage to suppose 18 percent or 16 percent like that what will happen when the concentration will go down the partial pressure of oxygen will also go down when the partial pressure will go down oxygen will not be diffused from the alveolus to the blood and patient will not get enough oxygen so there will be development of hypoxia so this is known as diffusion hypoxia the nitrogen oxide will diffuse from the blood to the alveolus okay resulting in dilution of this oxygen which is present in alveolus which in turn reduces the partial pressure of oxygen and when the partial pressure is reduced the oxygen oxygen will not be diffused into this blood and there will be hypoxia this is diffusion hypoxia how you can prevent this you can prevent it this by supplying pure oxygen not allowing the patient to breathe in the ambient air just after the removal of the nitrogen oxide you can provide pure oxygen for a certain period of time and when animal will normalize or you can say most of the nitrogen oxide when it is exhaled out and the patient can breathe the ambient air so this is basically the uh, uh, gaseous anesthetics okay the max value of uh, uh, nitrogen oxide is 200 percent okay you, you cannot supply with 200 percent of nitrogen oxide okay so this is all about the gaseous anesthetics and also this is all about the entire anesthesiology i think veterinary anesthesiology is your unit two in undergraduate uh, syllabus so the journey has come to an end okay the anesthesiology next we may start radiology okay so till then tata bye bye take care